time for today's Phoenix Printing Player Feature, and it's a very, very special one here as we have one of the first members of the Green Jackets to make the major leagues as an Atlanta Brave. It's Vaughn Grissom. How's it going? Pretty good, and you? Oh, not too bad. So let's start off. You know, you're part of the first ever Green Jackets team back in 2021 after the affiliation with the Braves. What was it like when you got to Augusta for the first time? It was sweet, man. It was sweet. It was a, it was a cool place to play your first full season. You know, it was a, it was such a great fan base and awesome stadium. I love the stadium and everything that they bring along with it. Yeah, just the building out on left and the water on right, and then the the terrace over there. It's pretty awesome. But uh, yeah, I enjoyed my time a bunch over there, and I'm glad that's where I had my first, you know, low A experience. You play 75 games there that that first year. Did you have a favorite road trip in the league? Hmm. Columbia, Columbia was pretty cool. Um, also, it was pretty close, but uh, I'm sure there's some other ones out there. Uh, you know, I really enjoyed our home, our home field. I thought we had one of the better parks in the in the in the league, so it was pretty cool. But um, yeah, I guess I would say Columbia, maybe. Without a doubt. And I hear that, you know, from players who have been in and around the Brave system that the the clubhouse in Augusta is one of the nicer ones. Obviously, it's a, it's a new park. What was the uh, adjustment like for you as a player coming off the COVID year and after getting drafted in 2019? What was the adjustment like to, to your first full year of pro ball? Yeah, at first it was weird. We all had masks on and it wasn't like real, the, you know, the the lockers were spread out, but then uh, as things got normal, it was a it was a great experience. Huge clubhouse, yeah, like you said, it's very nice. It's all done done really well, and uh, I was really glad to be a part of that squad. And uh, especially like being in Georgia and being like with the Braves, obviously the new affiliate was like that was a dream come true. Who were the guys who you were close with on that team? Because obviously it was it was a weird time in baseball because with the alternate site the year before, there wasn't a whole lot of continuity. But what was the team building like for you guys? Oh, it was sweet, man. We had a we had the apartments over there. I had my my best friends were Paulini, Stephen Paulini. He was there last year. Uh, Valdez, uh, Javier Valdez, which was another great one. Um, we had great dudes. We had uh, Cam Shepard was there at, still at the same time, and he was a big Georgia guy. So it was pretty cool to have that around. And just, um. Yeah, we had some good talents and some some good people. I think um I'm trying to think. Oh, Campbell, yeah, Drew Campbell. We came down. We were we yeah, we were a pretty good squad and Cal Conley and everybody. Justin Malloy came there at the end. It was you know, we had a good little squad. I, I liked it. Do you have a, a favorite playing memory from your time with the Green Jackets? There's a lot. Yeah, there's a I'll try to there's a lot, but um, I remember one time there was a it was a pretty close game, and then there was like a, a I don't know bases loaded like late innings, and I think a uh, Barger was pitching, and there was a, a ground ball hit at the middle. He kicked it. I was playing third at this time. He kicked it up, and it like fell right in front of me, like on the third baseline, and I'm like, oh, okay, and I could, like run up barehanded throw it home we got him out saved like a run it was like it was like a big insurance run that they you know the other team needed or something like that so uh it was a pretty cool one uh i think we had a couple of walk-offs that year um it's more so it's fun when like your teammates and stuff hit walk-offs so i think uh javi valdez hit a, a walk-off one time early on in the season and uh i thought it was really cool and it was just you know being able to celebrate seeing how the fans reacted all the whole the whole nine yards yeah, there's there's nothing like it. You mentioned playing third base there and switching gears a little bit. Uh, you've yeah. played all across the infield, but I know that you're someone who's worked pretty closely with Ron Washington at, at the major league level. What's it been like learning from him and, and what's the relationship like there and, and how does he sort of teach you? Oh, he's a, he's a guru, man. He, he knows how to teach every single person in their way and kind of, he's like the best teacher, you know, you could ask for. It's like a, some people are visual. Some people, you know, need to be told certain things. Um, some people need to be like you know, talking, like a little messed with, you know. So uh, he definitely finds his his ways, and I feel like it, hel it helps it, your whole game once you like really connect because you can ask him anything and he understands you. 
So going to the major leagues, obviously. So at the end of your year with Augusta, you you play about a month in high A Rome. You start off the next year in double A Mississippi. And then a little bit more than halfway through the year, the Braves make the call and they bring you up to Boston in early August. What was it like? Walk me through your call up. How did that how did that conversation go for you? Oh, it was a great one, man. It was a uh... It was late. It was after a game. It was like 11 or something like that. It was after a game we had in um, Knoxville. And, uh, yeah, I just kind of actually missed my call. You know, I missed my call, whatever. And I look at my phone and it says missed call from, you know, Ben Sestanovich a minute ago. And I'm like, oh, okay. It wasn't, yeah, I didn't miss it too bad. And uh, I thought it was about the Arizona Fall League. So I'm like, hey, what's up? Like, yeah, he's like, oh, you, you want to go to the, the Fall League or whatever? And I was like, ah, you know, uh, you know, it's been a long year type thing. He's like, hold on. He put someone else on the phone. And then, um, yeah, they break the news to me that I was going to to the majors. And I just, I lost it. You know, I was crying. I was, I was bawling. I was like, I couldn't even talk for like four minutes, man. They're just sitting there trying to tell me how, like, oh, it could have happened to a better person. I like... I'm glad it happened to you. You deserve it. I'm like, wait, just wait. Just hold on. Yeah, I'm like crying. I'm like, let me finish crying. I can't even, I was about to have a heart attack, man. It was awesome. Yeah, I mean, to get the call as a 21-year-old, to get the call straight from double A, I mean, aside from Mikey Harris, who had that happen, you know, two months before, it's, it's, it's pretty rare. What was the next couple of days like for you, packing your stuff, getting on that flight? How did that go? Oh, it was a... Uh... It was pretty simple, man. They help out a whole bunch because they know the, the situation you're in. So uh, the clubbies and everybody else, managers, they all help help out and just try to make everything as easy as possible. But, yeah, it was like a dream, man. I, I couldn't – I didn't really process what was going on for a little while, but we figured it out and uh, we got into Fenway. <laughs> there are uh, some places to make your debut and, and Fenway being, you know, America's most beloved ballpark, obviously a very different atmosphere than what you would get at a lot of uh, different places. I happened to be in the crowd um, before I started working with the Green Jackets for that day. And obviously you uh, had quite the debut back uh, <laughs> you know, back then. You know, you, you you homered, you had a stolen base. You were the youngest player, I believe, in Major League history to get a homer and a stolen base on your debut. Just you step into that batter's box in Fenway Park for the first time. What's going through your mind? It was surreal, man. It was there wasn't a lot going through my mind. There was so much happening, and I'm just trying to take it all in. Just I'm just I was in awe of the stadium. I was in awe of everything. The the grass, you know, it, the whole nine yards. It it, it, it was really a a moment I, I'll never forget. And um, just being there, like you said, just being on the field was like, oh my gosh. And then like knowing that I'm gonna play later, it was like I had didn't even have time to think about it. You know, it was a uh, it was insane. Did you get your family up there as well? Of course. Yeah, yeah, of course. You know, we got everyone out there. Had a couple of family members that were out there already. So um, so they just drove down a couple, you know, hour or two to, to go get to the game. And it was, it was pretty cool. And then in the seventh inning, you're up against Joely Rodriguez and you hit what, you know, could be referred to as an absolute bomb. Uh, <laughs> you're in the batter's box. You make that contact. Do you know it's gone off the bat? So... That was the that was the coolest moment. Obviously, it was a uh, I swear time froze like the Haddenberg moment in the you know in Moneyball, and so uh, I time froze at contact, and it, it sounds stupid cliche, but it, for I'm being for real. Like I see the ball like smush against my bat, and then I see the ball like slowly leave in a direction where and then I was like, yeah, that's gone. <laughs> you know, you kind of. Kind of, you know, felt it, didn't feel anything, which is good. Felt like a marshmallow. And then just seeing the ball at a trajectory, I was like, oh, my gosh, it's in slow motion. I couldn't believe it. Yeah. You, you get that ball back, by the way? Of course. Yeah, we got it back. Yeah, it landed up down there at the hotel or something that's out there. And some people, I think they traded a, a bat and uh, maybe tickets to the next game or something like that, which is uh, pretty cool. I'm, gl I'm glad I got that one back. That's a pretty cool deal to make, I think, and a reasonable one as well. Is there an aspect of the sort of big league routine that you have really enjoyed, whether that be pregame stretches or anything that you experience in the big leagues once you are a sort of quote unquote big leaguer? Yeah, no, it's it's everything, man. Everything in the big leagues is great. And I'm, there's 
it's not even comparable and it's almost undescribable just how uh how well they do everything how uh they cater to you you know they they really do what you need and um it's just a business it's just the it's the best business you know aspect and it's a, it's pretty cool Talking about the Braves in general, obviously the news this week about A.J. smith Shaver getting selected. The Braves are not afraid to pick guys up to the major leagues who they think are ready. And looking at some of the guys who you played with, obviously Spencer Strider pitched 15 innings on that Augusta team back in, in April of 2021. But also the other guys who have gone on to debut from that team as well. There's now going to be four of them. What does it mean to you to be part of an organization that rewards talent who are ready regardless of the age no i definitely think um i think that's how it should be you know i think uh, a lot of players come in and sometimes maybe they, they might lose you know some love because they're doing everything they can and it's not feeling like it's worth it or something like that so it's cool to see a, a club that actually like you said will will push your guys that need to be pushed and you know if they get handed you know they need they need to go back down and then they, they do what they're supposed to do but um initially if they earn it you know you they give it to you so it's it's pretty cool to see a, it's a real it's real you know i feel like in other organizations you could be the best player in the whole for three years in a row and you're not going to get your shot for you know for nothing and they're also not going to get rid of you to give you an opportunity. They might just hold on to you and just let you rot, you know. So it's cool that the Braves are, you know, it's one of the, the realest organizations out there. And they, and they uh, I feel like they're a model for the whole league. So you make your debut on the road in August of last year. What was it like when you made your first start at Truist in Atlanta? It was pretty cool. It was pretty cool. I was uh that was even crazier. I feel like just with all the people that showed up, all the people like in the stands, how we pack it out, seeing like some of the things for the first time, like when they take out a pitcher, opposing pitcher, and they have like the lights go down, and it was just surreal. And then getting back to where you are right now, you spent some time this year up in Atlanta. You spent some time in AAA Gwinnett. How have you approached your development in the last couple of months? Oh, it's about, I've been obviously focusing a lot on defense, um, just trying to pick the ball. You know, I've been uh, just working hard with Tui and, and Wilk and just doing everything we can to just stay on, you know, stay on the field. When it comes to the development staff, not just in terms of, you know, Matt Tuasasopo, but, you know, the other, the Rovers, the guys in the, in the Braves system, Terry Pendleton, for example, who, you know, comes by and helps out. How do those conversations go with you? How are they sort of um, helping you grow, I suppose? Oh, they have a lot of trust in me and they have a lot of, you know, they believe in me so much. And uh, we actually have a rover here right now in Hooper and uh, just the, the way that they, they teach and they they know how to talk to me and how, you know, what works for me. And they, they're very honest with me. So they, you know, all of that. And um, it's great because we have so much knowledge and that's what a lot of people are lacking. You know, a lot of people just have numbers, people. And uh, I feel like our guys really know the game of baseball and they know how to teach the game of baseball and they understand the process of baseball and they know what happens mentally, you know, in, in the game. So they're really good about keeping you on your toes and just, you know, just being who they need to be. Just a couple more things for you again. Thank you so much for for taking this time on a, a game day for you. Uh, you make your major league debut on, I think it was August 10th last year. And exactly a year ago before that, you were playing for Augusta. Do you sort of ever sit back and think about how crazy it is to have gone from SRP Park to Fenway Park in the span of 365 days? It's absolutely insane. It's absolutely, I don't even, like sometimes I can't even process it. But yeah, I think about it all the time, how 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 quick things happen, where I should actually be right now, you know, versus what's at, like just the opportunity. I think about it all. It's a... It's quite, like I said, it's an opportunity of a lifetime. And so a lot of people don't get that ever, you know, they don't they just don't get that shot. And um, to be able to go that far in a year, a year's time is like, you know, ridiculous. I don't I don't understand how it happens sometimes, too. But, uh, you know, everything happens for a reason. A couple of fun ones to close us off. What is your walk up song at Truist Park and why? Uh, at Truist Park, I it was Welcome to Jam Rock by uh, yeah, uh, Junior Gong or something like that. And uh, I just love the reggae. I love the way it makes you feel, you know, it kind of gives you like this 
this confidence that you just go up to the, you know, whatever happens, happens. But uh felt like I'm in charge. Also I have Who You Fooling by Gunna, just for Atlanta native native, and it's real so slow and just like a piano, you know, so it's a I like the vibe. Over here at um in AAA, I got um Could You Be Loved by Bob Marley, which is another good one. I imagine that one will make it back to truest. But uh it's pretty cool, man. It, it, it's uh there's nothing like the speakers at Truist, I'll tell you that. <laughs> yeah, those are uh, you know, everything is bigger in the majors, right? Uh speakers included. Two more for you. I've been asking a lot of guys this year, would you rather hit a walk off in front of your home crowd or make mm-hmm. a game saving defensive stop, like catching a liner on a dive to quiet an opposing crowd in the ninth inning on the road? I think there's nothing like hitting a walk off for your home team. You know, I think the other one would be great because defense to just shut someone up on defense is awesome. But hitting a walk off homer at Truist would be like, you know, that would be out of this world. <laughs> just the way they would react and stuff. And just like, you know, obviously it's a day by day game. They might love you that day. And, uh, but it would be awesome. You know, that, that night would be a great night. Last thing for you, you're 22 years old and you've got a bobblehead night. Have you ever, did you ever think about, you know, getting onto a bobblehead or having a bobblehead made of you at any point in time? I did, you know, I did. And, uh, I never thought it would be now though. You know, I, I never thought that, uh, I was hopefully, I, I thought I was going to have to have someone custom make me one, you know, or something like that. But, uh, <laughs> It's super cool that um you know that they they show that love and that uh, I got my own bobblehead which is crazy I can't I sometimes I can't believe it because you know like you said everything happened in like less than a year so uh, having my own bobblehead is actually awesome I think uh my family's gonna like it even more than me and that's pretty hard to do because you know I'm gonna have that thing on my car or something like that but uh no it's really surreal man I can't believe uh I get this opportunity to you know to to be some people's fan favorites or whatever, and just uh, just have that out there. It's just ridiculous. Obviously, like all the guys who get bobbleheads going through the, the system, like Freed, Michael Harris, you know, like Soroka, like all the big dogs, you know. So it's cool to be a part of that conversation. Well, you are certainly a big dog. And uh, on behalf of the Green Jackets and the Green Jackets fans, you know, wishing you best of luck the rest of the season. And uh, you'll always be a, a member of that first Green Jackets team. I appreciate that. That was a a great year. I appreciate you guys. Thank you so much. We'll be back with Green Jackets baseball in a few short moments. Awesome. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it, dude. Um, It was was awesome seeing your debut last year and obviously getting hired by the Green Jackets later on. uh, Kind of a nice little full circle moment as well. So Sweet. I appreciate Um, you again. Thank you. Uh, Good luck today and uh, hope to catch you at some point either in Gwinnett or in Atlanta this summer. Yes, sir. Nice to meet you.